Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, let's talk about radar detector filtering. Uh, the holy grail of a radar detector is to have it only alert to police officers, right? Um, and never ever false alert to anything. However, there's no radar detector that's actually capable of doing that. And so they all have a number of different filters uh, to try and filter out different types of false alerts. Now, the exact way that these different filters are implemented are gonna vary between different manufacturers or even different detectors. Uh, but nevertheless, a lot of these have different types of filters to deal with false alerts. And so in this video, let's just quickly run through a variety of the different filtering options that we have um, and take a look at kind of what the different options are to deal with false alerts. So first off, most detectors are gonna have like a highway mode and a city mode. All this is really doing is just varying the sensitivity of the detector. So on highway mode, you're gonna be getting full sensitivity and longer distance alerts. Uh, in the city, you're gonna be having a lot more false alerts around. Uh, plus you're gonna be driving slower and you don't necessarily need the range. And so they may actually dial back the sensitivity a little bit on certain bands to try and cut down on false alerts. Uh, then if you see an auto mode, that's typically gonna automatically switch between highway mode and city mode. Um, it may be based on speed. Uh, it may just switch between the two back and forth, or maybe it'll kind of progressively raise the sensitivity as you go faster and then progressively lower it as you go slower. But typically it's kind of an automated way uh, to vary the detector sensitivity. Next, there's gonna be uh, traffic sensor filters. Uh, you'll see this typically called TSF or TSR. The name varies between different detectors, but basically these are designed uh, to filter out traffic sensors that you'll find on the side of some highway. Uh, and those traffic sensors will kind of blast K-band radar and cause your detector to just periodically false as you're driving down the road. They're only used in some states, but if you uh, have traffic sensors, this filter is very helpful. It's designed to basically just filter out shorter bursts of radar and require a longer source of radar uh, in order for the detector to alert. And so uh, it can be useful to filter out traffic sensors. It can also filter out some pulsed uh, blind spot radar. So it can be useful for blind spot radar systems too. Uh, but the trade-off in terms of performance is you're typically going to have reduced reactivity because it's filtered filtering out shorter alerts, uh, and that can also impact range to some extent as well. Next, we've got things like uh, low speed muting. Uh, this is gonna be useful when you're driving around in cities or sitting at a red light and there's maybe like a door opener next to you or something in a shopping center, or you're driving around in a parking lot. Uh, if you're driving below a preset speed, uh, it's just gonna keep the detector quiet for you. This affects both real alerts and false alerts. It's just a, a simple speed-based filter. Uh, you can either just set a preset speed or some detectors may actually try to vary the speed uh, based on the speed limit of the road that you're on if they have access to the speed limit information as you drive around. Uh, another popular filter is gonna be GPS lockouts. This is basically gonna use uh, kind of the location of different signals and the frequency of those signals to try to filter out uh, false alerts that you pass every time you drive by. So uh, if you're driving around in the city and there's always a speed sign on the side of the road or you're always passing by the same shopping center and grocery store door, door openers, it can learn this particular signal in this location and this frequency and just mute it for you in the future. Uh, if you're in a different location or you see a different frequency signal, uh, those signals are gonna be alerted to, but it's trying to basically filter out known stationary false alerts. It doesn't work against moving signals like blind spot falses, but it's useful for stationary sources. Now, speaking of blind spot falses, a lot of the blind spot radar will actually transmit in certain small frequency ranges. Uh, and so certain detectors are gonna have some additional filtering options to deal with signals uh, within these small sections of K-band. And you're typically gonna see this called something like K-block or K-notch. Uh, they're basically gonna do things like maybe reduce the sensitivity in certain frequency ranges, or maybe just block all signals in this range, both real and false alerts. Maybe mute signals or only mute weak signals. They're gonna give you some control and basically some additional filtering options to deal with the false alerts in these frequency ranges. Now, pretty much every modern detector, not so much old detectors, but modern ones are gonna have some additional uh, blind spot specific filtering capabilities. The exact way that these work are a bit of a black box. Manufacturers typically don't publish kind of the algorithms behind how their blind spot filters work, but ideally these are designed to filter out blind spot falses uh, and let you know police radar guns pass through. There's different ways of approaching this based on signal modulation and all this kind of stuff. Um, and again, some detectors are gonna do better at this than others, but these are actually designed to filter out uh, blind spot falses and just given how many sources of blind spot radar there are these days, it's almost always gonna be necessary. Now, some people, if they don't have a lot of K-band in use in their area, they may just disable K-band altogether. Uh, this is gonna be risky if police officers actually use K-band, but this is just kind of like the nuclear option <laughs> to just knock out uh, K-band, real or false, uh, in your area and get your detector extra quiet. Next, there's also things like a band segmentation, which is similar to K-notch and K-block, 
uh, where you're basically just going to be like shutting off certain frequency ranges uh, on K-band or maybe more commonly KA-band. Because KA-band, you're rarely going to see a false. You can actually shut off certain frequency ranges to deal with false alerts in that range or uh, even improve the performance of the detector so it's not wasting time scanning kind of unnecessary frequency ranges where police are never transmitting. So band segmentation uh, is another feature that you're going to use for sometimes performance reasons and sometimes for false alert filtering reasons. Uh, and finally, you'll also see some kind of KA specific filters, whether it's a KA filter, sometimes it's called RDR for radar detector rejection or KA guard. Again, the names and kind of implementations of these filters may vary. Uh, a lot of times these are going to be dealing with uh, false alerts from other nearby radar detectors that are kind of poorly designed and leaky. They can actually leak signals and cause your radar detector to false. And so they may do some additional scanning looking for harmonics uh, of the other radar detectors, which you won't see if you're actually looking at a police radar gun. Um, Escort actually has a nice patent that explained this, and I did an article about it uh, years ago, which I'll link to in the video description. Um, but basically, there's some additional scanning that's being done to look for uh, the harmonics from uh, radar detectors versus police radar guns. And so this is just kind of a quick run through of some of the common filters that you'll see. Some of them uh, vary sensitivity, some of them will vary the responsiveness, some uh, will work against moving sources, while others are maybe focused on like stationary sources. And none of these are going to be completely effective against all sources, which is why you kind of have a variety of different filters and you kind of stack multiple filters and like these ones will filter out those falses. This filter will address those faults those falses, you know, and you're going to be balancing all this kind of stuff to try to knock out as many false alerts as you can without necessarily compromising performance too much. It's all going to be a balance and playing with the filters is all about striking the best balance for you. You may uh, prefer a detector that's focused more on quietness while somebody else is going to prioritize performance and they're going to be adjusting their filters accordingly based on personal preference as well as where they're driving. And so that's just a quick run through of the different filtering options. And if you check out the tutorials I've got on my website or on my YouTube channel, they're all kind of the same thing, basically just playing with these different filtering options um, and kind of fine tuning the detector to get it uh, optimized for what you want. And so, yeah, that's just a quick run through as far as uh, different radar detector filtering options. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great and I'll see you in the next video.